London is not a beautiful city. Under the soot that covers its buildings is a teeming mass of four million souls trying to survive, mostly off of each other. You see it in the paper every day. Thankfully, we have the London Times to keep us informed of all these troubling activities with an unbiased eye and razor-sharp accuracy. We find this publication to be of invaluable assistance in our investigations, and I'm sure you will as well. Among the forces of evil which run rampant in this city, there are also, thankfully, two groups of individuals who will aid us in our cause. As we do, they attempt to right wrongs and restore harmony and civility to the streets of London. The first of these groups is a ragtag association of young ruffians. I call them the Baker Street Irregulars. Don't let them fool you. They may be scruffy and ill-bred, but they are on the right side of the law. They can go everywhere, see everything, and overhear everyone. They are my eyes and ears in the streets of London, unquestionably a tremendous asset in our work. They will help us in our investigations if they can. The other group is a far more civilized collection of gentlemen and institutions. I call them the Baker Street Regulars. They, too, will be extremely useful in our work. At the start of any investigation, do keep in mind that it is a capital mistake to theorize before one has data. Unwittingly, one begins to twist facts to suit theories instead of theories to suit facts. The people and places to whom I will now introduce you will help us to collect the facts. May we use them wisely. Come, the game's afoot. Hello and welcome to Let's All Play the Sherlock Holmes Consortive Detective Series. This Let's Play will be done entirely on your choices. You tell me where you want to go, and for what reason, and we will go there. All the details can be found in the thread and description, including the rules of how to vote, of where to go. I will try to keep everything updated as we reach new cases. The introduction, regulars and tools section will be the same for every single case. So we only really need this one introduction video. Before we get to the people that Sherlock mentions in the introduction, I'd like to go through some of the tools that we have at our disposal. The first tools that we have are the newspapers and including the introduction video to each case, this gives you an idea of the initial leads of where to start each case. And I will upload them all for your perusal but as each case starts, I will try to link the relevant newspapers to each case. Unfortunately, the CD-ROM versions are out of order compared to the board game, but I'm sure we will manage. So let's go on to some other tools that we have. The directory is a long list of names and locations of which we can visit. It contains everyone involved in the case, people who can help us along the way, and it also contains a lot of dead ends and red herrings. We can send the detectives to any location, as well as the irregulars, but the irregulars are pretty much specialized in what they can do. I will be providing a short list of locations which contain a unique interaction, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's the interaction will be of any use. It just means it will make life a little bit easier for yourselves. The notebook is pretty handy as it keeps a record of all the locations that you have visited, as well as all the clues that you have collected. We can ask for help from Dr. Watson himself, but I won't be doing that in this playthrough. I may make a separate video for that. Each location contains its own unique video scene. It's up to you to decide whether the information that you hear is helpful or not. If we believe that we have enough evidence to secure a conviction, we can bring the case to the judge. He will ask us a series of questions and it's up to us to get them correct. Even though this game isn't a competition, 
the aim of the game is to score the least amount of points possible. The regulars are able to provide us with different kinds of information. Generally, it's useful, but sometimes they won't tell us anything more than what we already know. On rare occasions, it can also be an entirely wasted trip. Each regular is an expert in their own field. Let's go through them one by one, and you can discover more about them. Mr. Henry Ellis is the foreign news editor for the London Times. He is a great reservoir of information of what's happening on the continent. He also has an interest in crime news. Ellis is always happy to help when he can, but you must be careful of what you tell him, or you might find what you've confided to him in the next day's Times. This is a records office housing documents pertaining to births, marriages, deaths, and last wills and testaments. Quentin Hogg is a crime reporter for the Police Gazette. He is an ex-police inspector who found the environment of Scotland Yard less than stimulating. He has a strong deductive mind and is a very good resource. Porky is not a pillar of society, I dare say, but he is a man who has learned from his mistakes and is trying to start a new life. Although he is no longer in prison, he is still behind bars, or shall I say, a bar. <laughs> Charlie good one, Holmes. Yes, Watson. Well, the bar in question is the Raven and Rat Inn. Porky is the proprietor. He has been of great help to us in the past, and I expect he will continue to be in the future. Ah, oh, Scotland Yard. If the Yard knew how to examine evidence with any skill, there would be no need for our services. Inspector Lestrade is the pick of a bad lot. But it is true they may be a source of valuable information. After all, the professional police have methods for gathering facts that are not open to us. Edward Hall is a young barrister whom you will find on most days at the Old Bailey. He's a cut above the other unimaginative members of his profession. Holmes, don't you think you should explain to them the difference between a barrister and a solicitor? Yes, of course, Watson. A solicitor handles the routine legal business of our society. If you do not have to go before a court, you will have no need for a barrister. If you must go before a court, then your solicitor would engage the services of a barrister. Head clerk Disraeli O'Brien is your contact in the Office of Records. The Office of Records contains legal records, both criminal and civil, as well as state papers. I think you'll find O'Brien to be a walking, or should I say sitting encyclopedia of the office's affairs. Now here is a person who usually gets in the last word. Langdale Pike is a human reference work on social scandal, especially on the London scene. He contributes bits of gossip to the garbage papers that cater to an inquisitive public. If I can't find something in my own files, I go and examine the overflowing shelves of the great London library. It is a wealth of information. This gentleman is the head chemist at Scotland Yard Criminology Laboratory. It is rumoured that Murray lives in the lab. He is eternally bent over one of his tables trying to extract the history of a crime from the physical evidence he's been given. Sir Jasper is the chief medical examiner for St. Bartholomew's Hospital. He is London's greatest forensic pathologist. You can depend on him for all the technical details that can be obtained from any corpse whose cause of death is in question. And that is it. Good luck and happy sleuthing.